back. Oh, take Slim. B. Bro. Who? What's good? Heard you out. Yeah. Welcome home. Thanks, dog. <laughs> and you with Prop Joe now. Never would have thought. Yeah, well, life's strange. Yeah. Holla. Now, during the Avon and Marlowe beef, Slim Charles played one of the most significant roles. And not just pertaining to protecting Avon and his reputation, but also to preserving the old ways, preserving the honor and the respect that even killers operated with to the best of his ability. On a Sunday morning. You called to ask? Shamrock said to go. On a Sunday morning, y'all try to hit a nigga when he taking his wrinkle ass grandmas to pray? And y'all don't hit the nigga neither? All y'all kill his grandma's crown? And by the time Sham say go, oh my damn near in the cat. Ain't enough y'all that violated this Sunday morning truce. No. I'm standing here holding a torn up church crown of a bona fide cutter lady. Do you know what a cutter lady is? Not your mom's for sure. Because if they was that, y'all would have known better than that bullshit. Y'all trifling with Avon Box, their reputation here. Now, this scene gives us Slim Charles' personality, raw and uncut. Slim is cut from a different cloth. His moral respect for the game gives his character more depth than the typical hired muscle. And in this scene, it's not Sherrod whose slim ideology is being compared to, it's Stringer, the one who green lighted the hit in the first place. Gerard and Sabah got the sights on them all. Tried to be slim and he didn't answer me. So? This church day spring, Sunday morning, you know? It shows him. Omar, yeah. Do. do it. See, what makes Stringer completely ignoring the Sunday truce even worse is because it's not out of ignorance, but out of a lack of respect for the game. Let me ask you something though. Did you tell them discount ass niggas that they could pop off at all my grandma? Oh man. Cham come to me in the middle of the meeting and talk about they got their sights on all my and say nothing about no grandma, no church hat, nothing like that. I hear the cocksucker's name, I say go. On Sunday morning? Yo, I don't give a fuck, man. I hear that cocksucker's name, man. I ain't thinking about a church day. You know, Sunday truth has been around as long as the game itself, man. I mean, you know what I'm saying? You, you can do some shit and be like, what the fuck? But hey, just never on no Sunday, man. Now, every street boss is not in need of a stringer bell. But every street boss is always in need of a good soldier. Yo, we always in the market for a good soldier. How you feel, tall man? Pretty pioneer out there for us. Nah, I'm good where I am. Now, Joe is a phenomenal negotiator because he's naturally good at analyzing, then articulating where you both can benefit. See, with Avon gone, Joe needed protection from Marlowe because from a bird's view in the sky, Joe is the only one left on Marlowe's level. And Joe is wise and he has connections. And Slim needs protection from Marlowe because from a cat's view in the street, he was the main enforcer executing all of Marlowe's people. And Slim is loyal but vicious. See, they will complement each other with their different skill sets and make the perfect duo. But understand this y'all, just because an alliance makes sense does not mean it will take place or that it will work properly if it does take place. This is where we must, we must give Joe and Slim more credit because not only did they understand that they had the perfect duo, but they was loyal enough and humble enough for it to work effectively. See. Joe and Slim is just as dangerous as Avon and Stringer, as Marlo and Chris. But let me stop yapping, y'all, so we can hop into the story. We out. You out of your mind, nigga? You think I'm gonna pay twice for the same motherfucking package? Hey, I'm in the same box here. Faggot took my shit, same as he took y'all. Man, but that's on your own people. 
Your guys was the ones doing security on this shit. Hey, they worked it the same as we did the last dozen shipments. Y'all was fine with it up until this, yeah, right? The truck for me. Ain't no one have a problem with it till the motherfucker gave us one. Thing is, Joe, we called a form on this. Took a vote that says it's your people need to make this right. Nah, nah, co-op means share and share alike. You share the good and you share the bad. Now, right now, I want to explain everybody's love-hate relationship with Prop Joe. Now, remember how I said all of the front end of his deals must be honest? Well, after years of doing this publicly, what happens is you build a solid reputation for being honest. But human beings being the complex creatures that we are, we are not what we seem to be. This is what gives room for Joe to use his honesty as a weapon when he sees fit. I'm supposed to know your people ain't in on it too. You know, because Joe says. Because I say. And you trust your people like that? I talk to my driver. I look into his soul. This is why you can have a gut feeling that Joe is lying to you. That he's playing you. But you still have to play the game with him. You still have to listen to what he's saying. Because men like Joe with the gift of gab, their only kryptonite is proof. A man learns best when he get burned. I know you ain't making this shit up. You don't. Things happen on the street. Proof is hard to come by. Also remember that I said Joe uses empathy to stay in touch with the feelings of his victims. So he's aware that you think that he's grimy. Now respecting the fact that you know and having a way with your words, man, when the fuck you gonna tell me something I don't know? <laughs> All right, let me put a point on it. What he does is he makes you comfortable by making you believe his only motivation is money. This is the front end of the deal. Said he would if I guarantee the parlay and I'm here on it. Of course, he said y'all would be paying my fee rather than his own self. Your fee? I'm doing like one of the marriage counselors. Charge by the hour to tell some fool he need to bring some flowers home. Then charge another hour telling the bitch she ought to suck some cock every little once in a while. You know, keep a marriage strong like that. But we know that his real motivations always lies in the back end of the deal, which most likely includes your life or your freedom. Business man such as myself does not believe in bad blood with a man such as yourself. Disturbs the sleep. Oh, I bet it do. By way of amends, a proposition. I know of a card game on the west side. High rollers, lots of cash money, boxcar size. You trying to set me up, Joe? You ever known me to be stupid? I'm trying to make things right here with you. How much we talking about? There ain't at least a few hundred K in that room I wish myself blind. <laughs> <laughs> Serious, Joe. I say again, have you ever known me to be a stupid man? See, Joe understands when dealing with someone like Omar, his word is more important than money. One, because Omar deals in a high stakes game. So you getting him rich means nothing if you get him killed in the process. And two, Omar may be deadly, but he's also one of the most respectful characters on the show. This is why Joe presents himself to Omar in that respectful manner and immediately puts some distance between him and the scheme that he played on Stringer because he heard that Omar was starting to figure it out. First of all, I heard you may be under the impression I was somehow involved with the late Mr. Bell and his play against you with Brother Mousson. I was no way involved. Stringer came at me to set up the parlay with you. He used me like he used y'all. I feel the need to say. It's said then. It's about on it. Business man such as myself does not believe in bad blood with a man such as yourself. Disturbs the sleep. Oh, I bet it do. See, with slick-talking people like Joe, 
they like to use metaphors and analogies to tell people the truth without them truly understanding. But he never tries this on Omar because Omar was raised by Butcher, meaning he's from Joe's era and he will understand what he's saying because Omar does it himself sometimes too. But what happens is Joe will tell you the intentions that he had for you through a metaphor. Now watch. Oughtn't you be laid up resting? Gunshot ain't nothing to trifle with. Sure to do hurt. <clears throat> but this here worked just fine. Toast stack polish it up good and put $7.50 on it. Shame to let a good toaster get away with a frayed cord. Shame to let a good toaster get away over a frayed cord. Now, the symbolism behind this is cheese getting shot by Brother Mozon. Cheese represents the toaster, and the gunshot wound to his shoulder represents the frayed cord. Now, Joe believes his lieutenant is too valuable to waste, so he won't let her make an emotional move and retaliate against Brother Mozon which would have been a death wish, but Cheese doesn't understand, so Joe has to spell it out for him. But watch how Joe does it to Old Face Andre too. Why is it that every Baltimore nigga think they're running the fuck away means crossing downtown? She you ought to be in New York or Philly or some shit. No, see, I know that. It's just that I don't know no one outside of b -more. And I was just hoping, let's say, a trade on my store, you could maybe, you know, Brought me some cash. Get me out of town of people you know. I mean, I come to the east side to you, but to me, west side motherfuckers are with Marlon. You know what the problem with these hair machines? They're too cheap to begin with. Some people think for what it's worth to fix it, make the shit work right, you might as well dump them and get another. Now, the symbolism behind this is Old Face Andre is the cheap machine. Getting him to another city until things blow over represents getting the cheap machine fixed to work again. But might as well dump him, get another one represents I'm giving your ass to Marlo. <laughs> and Old Face Andre didn't get it either. Joe told you your fate. And Joe didn't do this for personal reasons. He did this because Marlo had Chris and Snoop kill five New York people for some East Side niggas for the co-op <laughs> and they thought they was getting paid. <laughs> Got something that you want and it's coming back to you. Free of charge. Someone you looking for. Co-op mean what it sound like, dog. You happy to do for me? I'm happy to do for you. Come on over here, man. Come on. Chris, no! Yo, keep it quick, Joe. Here? Here's good. Not, not in the vacant. What's the difference? The difference is for, for people. They won't know. Don't know. But the rats. I'll be alone with the rats. Now, this is where I'm going to have to end it today. I'm going to throw Slim Charles back in the story and everything going to make sense. Just <laughs> have some patience for a player, y'all. But thanks for watching, man. You here at A Man's World. It's your boy, Swartz. Like, comment, subscribe. It's time for me to get out of here.